Tonight we're doing a teaching Passover Seder meal. The purpose of tonight's Passover Seder is to offer you an opportunity to see how the Messiah Yeshua, the King Messiah, connects to the traditional Passover Seder of the Jewish people. Obviously this Seder is found in the Torah, in what Christians call the Old Testament of the Bible, and it's been practiced for thousands of years, and in fact, it was practiced for thousands of years, even before the birth into time and space of the King Messiah Yeshua in the first century. Many of the elements that we're looking at tonight are elements that Yeshua would have used as a boy growing up and then as a man in ministry. Some of the elements we're using tonight have been added by our rabbis after the destruction of the temple in 70 CE. So those elements will make themselves quite clear because they represent things to do with the temple sacrifices during this season. Now I just need to be clear that this is a Messiah following Passover Seder. It is a concise version of the traditional Seder that connects us to those parts in what is called the Last Supper or the Last Seder of the King Messiah Yeshua which are recorded in Habuit HaChadasha, the New Testament. A shalom lecholam to everybody. We want to welcome you and wish you peace. In Chag Sameach, we're wishing you a joyous holiday. So let's begin. If you open up your Haggadah and you turn to page 3, I just want to begin by reminding you of the process that took place on Tuesday night of this week. The process we call Bidikat Hametz, or the searching for leaven, the searching for yeast. So on Tuesday night of this week, we searched our homes for yeast, and we swept up even the smallest parts of yeast with a feather and a spoon. We collected those together, and the following day, we brought together everything in the home that was made with yeast, such as cakes, bread, and so on. And with the yeast we had found the night before, we took it outside and the custom is to burn it, to incinerate it, completely get rid of it. Now, as followers of Yeshua, this is a great reminder of our need to let every room of our home be examined by the light of Yeshua. And for the yeast, which in Judaism, in fact, in the Bible in its entirety, represents sin. So we're asking through this symbolic practice that Yeshua, the King Messiah, who is the light of the world, would search out that sin and remove it from the rooms of our life. Because we understand that while in him we have already been redeemed, past, present and future, we nonetheless live in time and space and continue to sin and therefore we need to be sanctified on a regular basis. So that practice is called Bedekat Chameitz, and if you look in the Habuit HaChadashah, the New Testament, in the book of Luke 22.8, you'll read this. Yeshua sent Kephar and Yohanan, that's Peter and John, saying, Go, prepare us the Passover that we may eat. Now, one of the things these two disciples would have had to have done in order to prepare the Passover for Yeshua is Bedikat Chametz, the searching for leaven. So this is something now that connects you to the story, the true narrative, the history of the gospel and the way Yeshua celebrated the things of the Torah throughout his life. Now turn with me to the next page, page 4 of the Haggadah. And you'll notice at the top there's some Hebrew there. It reads, Dayane Haseder Belil Pesach which means the laws of the Seder on the night of Passover. And you'll see a scripture there, Luke twenty-two fifteen, And these are the words of Yeshua at his last Pesach Seder. I have eagerly desired to eat this Pesach with you before I suffer. Luke twenty-two fifteen. On the night that he was betrayed, the Messiah celebrated the Pesach Seder with his Talmudim, his disciples, passing the deeply symbolic foods among them. It was during this ancient remembrance of Israel's deliverance from slavery in Egypt 
that Yeshua revealed to them the mystery of God's plan for Israel's redemption from slavery to sin. It's no coincidence that the Messiah chose the Pesach Seder as the setting for introducing the symbols of his body and blood. Symbols that would come to mean so much, not only to the Jewish people, but also to those among the nations who would accept the gift of life that Messiah purchased through his death. Through the historical story of, part of the Passover lamb, Yeshua was able to explain the actions he would take over the subsequent hours. As we prepare to participate in this Pesach Seder, let's pause to contemplate God's wonderful redemptive purpose. Let's make this a sacred space yeah. together. Okay, now if you turn with me to page 5, which is just the next page, we're going to ask Bethany to say the Waha over the candles, which we call Le Hadlikot Hanerot, or the lighting of the festival lights. As we kindle the festival lights, we invite the illumination of the Messiah by the Spirit of God, our light and our deliverer. We invite you. Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kedishanu b'mitzvotov v'tivanu lihadlik ner shel shabbat v'shel yom tov. All blessing comes from you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us with his right actions and instructs us to kindle the light of the Sabbath and of this festival day. Okay, so now turn with me to page six, which is the next one over. And you'll notice it's headed the four cups of wine. Adonai said to Moshe, that's Moses, now you will perceive what I am about to accomplish. And that's found in the Torah and Shemot or Exodus 6.1. The Lord spoke these words to Moses, revealing to his servant the plan by which he would deliver the children of Israel. Now this is our first opportunity to read together. So I will say together and then we'll read together. Together, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will set you free from bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. And with great acts of judgment, I will take you to me as my people, and I will be your God. Shemot or Exodus 6, 6 to 7. During the Pesach Seder, we celebrate these four promises of redemption by drinking from our cups four times. Actually, we drink from our cups three times because one of those times, as you will find out, we don't want to be drinking because it's the cup of plagues. So, with each cup, we remember our individual and corporate redemption through the outstretched arm of God. Okay, and Bethany's doing what we should always do at a Passover Seder, to recline. Yeah. What recline means is that we're celebrating this Seder in safety, free from slavery, free from bondage. And so recline is equivalent to restful sitting or safety. Now let's turn to page 7, which is just across the page there. And you'll notice the heading is Kiddush Shel Pesach. Kiddush Shel Pesach, the cup of sanctification, the same Kiddush cup that we celebrate every eve of Shabbat. Here it is as the first cup of the Passover Seder. So I'm going to pour a cup. And if you have grape juice there with you at home, then please, this is the time to pour your first cup. And we don't fill them up too much because we are going to be drinking a lot of this stuff tonight. I'm going to ask us to lift the first cup together, remembering that we have been redeemed in Messiah Yeshua, past, present, and future. And we are being sanctified. We are being made holy. And that all blessing comes from the Lord. And now I'm going to ask together that we would chant the blessing. But first, because I know some of you will be visiting us for the first time tonight and won't know the tune to this blessing, 
our family is going to sing the tune for you, and then I'm going to say together, and we'll have another go at it, but with you involved, okay? So we'll be listening carefully to hear you chanting with us. <laughs> together. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Bore pri hagafen, Amen. All blessing comes from you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Okay, together. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Bore pri hagafen, Amen. All blessing comes from you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. As he, Yeshua, began his last Pesach Seder, the Mashiach shared a cup with his Talmudim, his disciples, and said to them, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Let's drink together. You will have noticed that the first cup Yeshua took was not the cup that Christians call communion today. This first cup that he took was Kos Kiddush, the cup of sanctification, but it was not the cup that he took to symbolize his blood. Being able to see where the Habit HaChadashah, the New Testament narrative, converges with the traditions of Passover helps us better understand what it means to take this communion that Christians now take on a regular basis. Let's turn the page to page 8. This part of the Seder is called Al Netilat Yadaim, or the washing upon the hands. This is something that we do as a symbol of sanctification. We've already washed our hands tonight because we're a pretty clean family, um, but this is a symbolic washing of the hands. Let's read the scripture that's at the top of page 8. Who may ascend the mountain of Adonai? Who can stand in his holy place? Only those with clean hands and a pure heart. And that's found in Tehillim or Psalms 24, 3-4. Before the washing of hands, we recite the blessing for the season. Now this text is in blue, but I'm not asking you to chant this. I will chant this and uh, wash my hands. And then I'll offer the water to the girls. So um, this this. A uh, special cup I have here is something that we use for Netilat Yadaim on a regular basis. So I'm going to use that and it simply says on here, Netilat Yadaim, the, the washing of hands. All blessing comes from you, O Lord our God, King of the Universe. Who has sanctified us by your right actions and has instructed us concerning the washing of hands. And you're welcome to get yourself a bowl of water if you'd like to try this. So the blessing isn't in the Haggadah, but again it's like this. All blessing comes from you, O Lord our God. King of the universe who has sanctified us by your right actions and has instructed us in the washing of the hands. Now you'll actually see uh, at the top of the page there that I um, jumped the gun a little bit washing my hands because really technically speaking we should have prayed uh, the blessing for the joy and the safety that we have in coming to this season. So we are going to do that together now. So still on page 8. And you'll see, I'm supposed to say, before the washing of hands, we recite the blessing for the season. But I forgot to do that. So now we're going to recite the blessing for the season. And we're going to do the same thing here, where I'm going to, or we're going to chant it for you once. 
and then we're going to say together and we're going to welcome you to chant it with us. You did such a great job of the first blessing. We look forward to hearing you sing the next one. Okay, so together girls. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Shehechianu vekiyimanu vehigianu lazman hazeh All blessing comes from you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life and sustained us and enabled us to reach this best of season. Okay, together. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Shehechianu vekimanu vehigianu Lazman hazeh All blessing comes from you, O Lord our God. King of the universe, who has kept us in life and sustained us and enabled us to reach this festive season. Now, as I said before, we've washed our hands to symbolize our desire to be clean before God, knowing that we can't wash ourselves clean, but that God is sanctifying us through His Son. But what if, at this point of the Seder, some crazy rabbi decided, that instead of washing his hands, he was going to wash his disciples' feet. Now this is incredible, because the washing of feet was done by the lowliest servant of the Middle Eastern household in the first century. There were usually three servants, and the one with the lowliest jobs of toilet cleaning, and cleaning the dirt off the floors, and washing the feet. That's the servant whose position Yeshua took. And instead of just washing his hands with the traditional netilat yadayim, Yeshua chose to gird himself and wash his disciples' feet. Let's read together at the bottom of page 8 in the blue or in the text next to the word all. Together. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the feet of the Talmudim, disciples, and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. He said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me Rabbi and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, the Lord and Rabbi, washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. And if you'd like to look for that in the Habit HaChadashah, the New Testament, HaBesorwa, Api, Yochanan, or John 13.5, and then 12 to 14 is the address for that scripture. Now to page 9. You'll notice on our Seder plate here a number of different elements. The first element we're going to take is the parsley. The people of Israel continued to groan under the yoke of bondage and they cried out and their cry for deliverance from slavery came up to God. Shemot or Exodus 2, 23. In Hebrew we call this karpas. karpas. Passover takes place in the spring. Now I don't know where you are in the world but for our Beit Merah community we're in New Zealand and we're coming into fall or autumn not spring. But in Israel, this festival takes place in the spring, when life is coming forth anew. This parsley represents life created and sustained by God. However, life in Egypt in bondage for the children of Israel was a life of pain, suffering, and tears, represented by the salt water that we have on our Seder plate. So you can't tell, but I've put salt in here. So this is the salt water. Some people use vinegar, something bitter to dip the parsley into. We dip the parsley into the salt water to remind us that life is sometimes immersed in tears. Now, the text does say all, but this blessing is a little difficult. So I will say it once for you, and then you can join with me. After saying the blessing, dip your parsley in the salt water that you've prepared and eat it. 
And what you are tasting is the tears of Israel's suffering and bondage and the tears of humanity who suffer under the bondage of sin. The blessing goes like this. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Pri HaAdama Together. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Pri HaAdama All blessing comes from you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the earth. We're tasting the salt and the, the tears of Israel. Okay, I'm still eating my parsley. Are you enjoying yours? I hope not. It's supposed to be tears. You're supposed to be crying with us. On page 10, you'll notice in English, it says the four questions. In Hebrew, Arba Kushiot. Okay, this is a very important part of the Seder. It's how we engage our children in the Passover Seder. We don't engage our children simply because we're parents who want to teach our children. In fact, we engage our children because God commands it in the Torah. In Exodus, or Shemot, 12, 26, and 27, we read this, When your children ask, which means the children have to be asking, Why do we keep this ceremony? You shall answer. So this part of the Seder is essential. Our children, and my daughter Azaria is in Canada, and we wish her a hag sameach. We miss you. <clears throat> we love you. I'm choking on parsley. Beseda, don't worry. But tonight, the youngest child in the household is Bethany. Youngest and only at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> and so she will chant for us um, the Arba Kushiot, uh, Manishtana. Manishtana is the name of the song, if you like, or the prayer that we chant. So she will do that on page 10. And if you'd like to try and follow along, you can follow the transliteration in the blue, or if you're in black and white, beneath the Hebrew text. And then Bethany will also read in English on page 11 the four questions that we ask and then continue to answer throughout the Seder. <laughs> Yafame Od. 
That was wonderful. Thank you. Give her a hand, everybody. That was fantastic. Some of those words are hard to get your tongue around. Trust me. <laughs> In English. How different this night is from all others. On all other nights we eat bread made with ye yeast or matzah. On this night, why do we eat only matzah? On all other nights we eat all kinds of vegetables. On this night, why do we eat only bitter herbs? On other nights, we don't dip our vegetables even once. On this night, why do we dip them twice? On all other nights, we eat our meals sitting or reclining. On this night, why do we eat only reclining? What great questions. So now turn with us to the next page, page 12 in your Haggadah. And if you're just joining us and you don't have a Haggadah, then please go to bethmalek.com and download the Haggadah on the right hand side of the page and come back and join us. So page 12, answering the four questions or as we said before, Arba Kushiot. You are to observe this word as law, you and your descendants forever. Shmot or Exodus 12, 24. It's both an obligation and a privilege to answer the four questions of Passover and recall the mighty redemptive works of God. The matzah. So, hopefully some of you downloaded our matzah recipe, which we got from B'nai Chaim, our sister congregation in Canada. Thank you, B'nai Chaim. Thank you, Rav Michael. So this is the matzah, a symbol on all other nights, we eat bread with leaven or yeast, but on Passover we eat only matzah, unleavened bread. When the children of Israel fled Egypt, they didn't have time for their dough to rise. As a result, the hot sun baked it flat. Scripture teaches that leaven represents sin together. Haven't you heard the saying? It only takes a small amount of chametz, leaven, to leaven the whole loaf. Therefore, remove the old chametz, leaven, so that you can be a new lump of dough, because you are truly unleavened. For our Pesach, Passover lamb, the Messiah, has been sacrificed. During the Passover season, we're reminded that it's for freedom Messiah has set us free. So, stand firm and don't return to the bondage of slavery to sin. This is in Rav Shaul's letter to the Galatian believers, 5.1. Passover is yet another opportunity to turn away from sin and toward God. We're now moving to page 13. The Matzah Tash. <clears throat> Tash is actually a Yiddish word meaning bag. So this is the matzah tash, and you'll notice that the matzah tash is divided, or it's sectioned off in three distinct sections with three pieces of matzah, but it is all one unit, okay? And so in Hebrew, when something is one and together, we call it echad, echad, one, a complex unity. This bread is the bread of affliction, the bread which our fathers ate in Egypt in bondage. Let all who are hungry come and eat. Let all who are in need share in the hope of Passover. As I've said, three matzot are wrapped together in one matzah tash or matzot bag for Passover. There are a number of explanations for this traditional practice. The rabbis call these three matzot echad, as I said, a complex unity. Some consider it to be the unity of the patriarchs, the patriarchs being Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Others explain it as a unity of worship, the Kohen, or the priest, the Levi, or the Levite, also in the priesthood, and the people of Israel, or the common man. At Beit Malek, we love to say this, we may be common but we are redeemed. We who know the Messiah see the unique triunity of God as Father, Ha'av, Son, Ha'ben, Veroah HaKodesh, 
and Holy Spirit. I'm going to take the central piece of matzah. So there's three pieces, ha'av, ha'ben, ruach ha'kodesh. The central piece is ha'ben, the sun. You'll notice that the matzah is striped. So you should be able to see there are lines on the matzah. Now let's all read together. Down the bottom third of the page, the matzah is striped. Together. He was wounded for our rebellion. He was bruised for our depravity. The discipline of our peace and completion was upon him, and by his stripes we are made whole. Now, some of you listening might say, He's reading from the New Testament again. Yaakov the heretic. Where did I read this from? I read this from the book Yeshayahu. The prophet Isaiah, from the scroll of Isaiah 53, 5. Not from the Habrit HaChadashah, but from Isaiah, the prophet. The matzah is also pierced. Notice the holes in the matzah. You can see the light shining through the holes, yeah? Reading together. I will pour out on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Yerushalayim the spirit of acceptance, of favor. And they shall look upon and pay attention to me, whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only son. Also from the New Testament, no? No. This is from Hanavi Zechariah. From the prophet Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 10. Turn the page with me to page 14. You'll notice that at the top of this page, we are now going to call this bread something new. When it's broken, it now becomes the bread called afikomen. Now this is a Greek word that came into the Passover Seder in the 400 year period after the Hellenization of the known world when the Greeks took over the world. And this word, Afikomen, is very interesting because it quite literally means coming one or the one who has come. Isn't that interesting? Just as the middle piece of matzah is broken, so too the Messiah was afflicted and broken. So now one half of this matzah, as I said, becomes the Afikomen, he who is coming. And Bethany, because I have such a wonderful wife who remembers that we need a napkin. Yaakov, where's the napkin? So Bethany is going to wrap the Afikomen in the napkin. The Afikomen is now hidden. And actually Bethany can't do that because after the main, say, the meal, the Shulchan Aruch, the main Seder meal, the children have to go and find the hidden Afikomen. So I'm going to ask Julia to go and hide that, and we're going to stop Bethany from looking, because we've got a small living room here. And Julia's going to go and hide that. The Afikomen is now hidden away until after the main meal. In the same way, the Messiah was placed in the tomb and hidden for a time. But, just as the Afikomen will be found and returned to complete the Passover Seder, so too the Messiah rose from the dead and ascended into the heavens. The remainder of the Afikomen, or the bread of affliction, is now eaten. But before we do that, as is the case with many things in Judaism, we will say a bracha, a blessing together. Now the chant is the same as the one for the wine, but there are slightly different words, so we will all chant it for you one time, and then I will say together again, and we will chant it with you together. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Hamotzi Lechem Min Haaretz Amen. All blessing comes from you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Together. 
ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, המוציא לחם מן הארץ. אמן. All blessing comes from you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. So if you have some matzah now, some bread of affliction, then now's the time to eat it. It's a little dry on its own, but soon we're going to, we're going to, Mix it up. Zhuzh it up a bit. Zhuzh it up. <laughs> I was looking for the word zhuzh. It's the Hebrew word meaning, no. I don't know what zhuzh is. Is that French? I don't know. Okay. Your play is French for yogurt, apparently. Really? Yeah. No, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Stick to Hebrew. Okay. Page 15. So now on our Seder plate, we're looking at this substance here, which is made out of horseradish. And in Hebrew, we call it maror, maror, bitter herb. On all other nights, we eat all kinds of vegetables, but on Passover, we eat only maror, bitter herbs. Our lives may be sweet today, however, let's remember that bitter suffering of the children of Israel in the land of Egypt and be reminded of the suffering that slavery to sin can cause. Reading together. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to work under cruel conditions, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick, and in all manner of work in the fields. All their work was done in affliction. Shemot or Exodus 1, 12 to 14. Now we're going to take some of our matzah and dip it in the ma'or, but before we eat, we're going to say the bracha. Now it says all. Again, I'm going to pray it first, and then I'll invite you to pray it with me. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר קידשנו בדברו וציוונו על אכילת מרור. All blessing comes from you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has set us apart by his word and instructed us to eat bitter herbs. Now together. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר קידשנו בדברו וציוונו על אכילת מרור. All blessing comes from you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has set us apart by his word and has instructed us to eat bitter herbs. Mm. Yum. Might be bitter, but it's yum. Yep. Turning the page to page 16 in your Haggadah. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this. I think I have. But the word Haggadah means the telling. The telling. Okay. We dip twice. Now this is important, the dipping twice. Because it makes sense of one of the passages of the Habrit HaChadashah, or the New Testament, where the disciples dip with Jesus, they dip more than once. They dip twice in the Seder. On all other nights, we don't dip our vegetables even once. But on this night, we dip them twice. We have already dipped the parsley into the salt water. Now... I'm taking this mud-looking mixture, which represents the mortar that we built bricks with for the Pharaoh. Okay? The children of Israel toiled to make cities for Pharaoh working in brick and clay. And this mixture is called chaoset. Chaoset. Okay? The Hebrew root for chaoset is cheres, meaning clay. 
The haroset reminds us of the clay the Israelites used to make bricks. We now scoop some of the bitter herbs. So we're going to need some more matzah. Actually, you're going to need two pieces of matzah for this. Now, let me do a brief explanation here. What we're doing now was first invented by a rabbi who lived in the first century CE. So he lived at the same time as Yeshua did. His name was the rabbi Hillel. And Hillel would take some of the Pesach or the lamb sacrifice of Passover, and he would put it between two pieces of matzah, of unleavened bread, and he would eat it. And this became a tradition for the Jewish people. And so it got the name Hillel Sandwich. But in 70 AD, when the Romans destroyed the temple in Jerusalem, the rabbis had to change the way they did things a little. And so now what we do is we take some of the sweet mixture, the haroset, okay, and we, we put that on. Oh, you got a tiny one. <laughs> It's awesome. Mmm, yum. And then we take some of the horseradish, the bitter herbs, and we mix them together, and we make a sandwich, and that's called Halal Sandwich. Okay? Let's all read together in the middle of page 16. We, we combine the bitter herbs with the haroset, to remind ourselves that even the most bitter of circumstances can be sweetened by the hope we have in God through Yeshua our Mashiach. Now there's no blessing for this because it was an addition by the, the Wav Hillel. But what I will do is invite you to eat it. Go ahead. It's quite, quite tasty. It does remind us that in bitter circumstances we still have a sweet hope in our King Messiah Yeshua that our circumstances don't dictate our faith, but that our faith is transcendent in all circumstances. Mm. And messy. Our faith can also be messy. Yep. Mm. You have a tissue? Okay, it's not the best food to be eating if you have a beard. Makes you wonder what all the Hiradim do. <laughs> In the Gospel of Mark 14, 18 to 20, we read this. And as they reclined and ate, As they reclined and ate, Yeshua said, Truly I say to you, one of you who is eating with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrowful and asked him one by one, Is it me? And he answered and said, It is one of the twelve who is dipping matzah in the dish with me. Now that you know that we all dip together, you can see why the disciples, the Talmudim, were confused. Why they were asking, is it me? Why they didn't know that it was Yehuda, or in the English Bible, Judas. It's because they all dipped together. So it was still a mystery to them. Okay, page 17. Tonight we recline. <laughs> and get love taps, that's nice. <laughs> On all other nights, we eat either sitting or reclining, but tonight we eat reclining. The first Passover was celebrated by a people enslaved, together. Once we were slaves, but now we are free. The children of Israel were instructed to eat the Passover in haste, their loins girded, their staffs in hand, their sandals on their feet, awaiting departure from the bondage of Egypt. Today, we have been afforded the opportunity to recline, to relax, and to enjoy the Passover Seder in freedom, together. Messiah said, Come unto me, all you who grow weary, tired, and exhausted, and are burdened by an oppressive load, and I will give you rest. 
comfort, peace, and wholeness. Matisiahu or Matthew 11, 28.